internet will be everywhere, including our contact lens. So we'll simply blink and we'll be online and we'll be able to see people's biographies when you look at them and your contact lens will translate from any language into any other language so you'll always know who you're talking to, what you're talking about and also your contact lens will have access to artificial intelligence. So if you are a doctor for example, you'll access Robodoc. Robodoc speaks any language gives you sound medical advice and is almost for free. This is going to revolutionize medical care and so you'll always have an artificially intelligent helper, a robo lawyer, a robo doctor, a robo engineer, even a robo professor that will help you negotiate life. And when you want to communicate on a different level, we're going to have BrainNet. BrainNet is when we connect the mind to a computer and then we'll have telepathy. We'll be able to communicate mentally and so in the future when you walk into a room and you want to communicate with other people you'll simply think. You'll send messages, you'll send emotions, you'll send feelings on BrainNet. So BrainNet is going to revolutionize not just communication but also entertainment. Who wants to go to the movies when you can go to the feelies and feel the emotions, the pain, the suffering of the actors and actresses. And so this is going to revolutionize entertainment. And teenagers of course will go crazy. Already teenagers send Facebook notices with happy faces at the end of every sentence. Why bother to do that when you can send the complete emotion and the memory on the internet? So BrainNet will replace the internet as well as entertainment. The fundamental problem with space travel is not technology, not science. The fundamental problem of space travel is cost, C-O-S-T. It costs $10,000 to put a pound of anything just in near-Earth orbit. To go to the moon costs about $100,000 a pound. To go to Mars, it costs about a million dollars a pound. However, the good news is the cost of space travel is dropping. Dropping for several reasons. One, we're going to have reusable rockets that don't throw away the booster rocket after we use them. And we have Silicon Valley entrepreneurs, competition, we have private enterprise driving down the cost of space travel. And so I think in the 2030s, we will go to Mars. However, to have a self-sustaining colony on Mars may take many decades after that. But remember now, on the long term, on the long term, we do have to go into outer space. Now, I'm a physicist. I realize that on a scale of thousands, millions, billions of years, we have to leave the Earth. There's no question about that. In five billion years, the Sun will eat up the Earth. There's not going to be an Earth anymore. On a scale of tens of millions of years, we have to worry about giant meteor impacts. Remember the dinosaurs did not have a space program. That's why the dinosaurs are not here today, because they didn't have rockets. And then we have to worry about volcanic emissions, volcanic eruptions. We have to worry about new ice ages on a scale of 10,000 years. And then, of course, we have to worry about global warming, nuclear proliferation, and biogerms. And so these are all the reasons why we need an insurance policy. We need an insurance policy to make sure that A, we don't blow ourselves up, and B, Mother Nature doesn't do us in.